Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Quoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the US to the UK. Live on air with Stephen Quoco. It has been a long, long time coming. I'm not going to give the date. I'm not going to drop it like that. But I'm going to say it's been a while. But things align at the perfect time when they are meant to be. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. No matter where you are in the world, you are listening to Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio and Biz Talk Radio. Home of all the best of news, sports, entertainment, film, reality TV, and more. It's a big lineup today. A huge, huge, huge lineup. Uh, If you've been paying attention to our social media on Power 98.5 Radio on Instagram. Also, Stephen Cuoco, Model Me VIP, Emoj Magazine International. The articles are coming in strong. We've got something coming out. Looking to talk about the gentleman with the one and only Theo James. Season two going to be film. It's going to be filming coming up, I believe, this year uh, for Netflix. I want to be on that show. It's so awesome. Season one, I watched it twice. Twice it was that good. Uh, once again, if you're listening or tuning in, or not, we want to make sure you are. <laughs> you can download the Power 98.5 iOS or Android app. You can tune in on Alexa. Uh, Live on Air is also available on Biz Talk Radio. That's biztalkradio.com. And it airs weekdays at 8 a.m., 12 p.m., and 5 p.m. Eastern. Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern. And Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to get right to it. I've got this great guy. Scott Hamm, he's an acclaimed American actor and award-winning producer hailing from the vibrant entertainment hub of Southern California. Born in Washington, D.C., my East Coast guy by heart, Uh, Scott's journey into the world of cinema has been marked by an unwavering passion for storytelling and a commitment to the craft. He's also recently produced and starred in a highly anticipated film, Final Wager, alongside veteran actors Michael Madsen and Tom Arnold. Scott, welcome to Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco. Stephen, how are you? What a great introduction. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. You're welcome. You deserve it. I know we've been wanting to get to this for a while. However, I don't know about you, but it's feeling really, really good. And I want to thank you for that um, that opportunity of letting me be able to watch your film at home. I enjoyed it very much. Where do you want to start? Because you've got a lot going on, a lot of projects we can talk about. Where should we begin? Yeah, that's amazing. I'm glad you liked the film. I'm glad you checked it out. And yeah, so you said it perfectly uh, in the intro, man. Sometimes things just work out the way they're supposed to. Uh, I think I'm in a great place right now and things are good. And yeah, and you're uh, full of positivity and energy. I love that. So I think we're talking at the exact right time that we were supposed to talk. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, where do we want to start? We might as well start right there then. Let's start with the, uh, with the movie that's currently out on uh, Amazon Prime right now called Final Wager that you so eloquently uh, introduced on myself and Michael Madsen with a nice uh, supporting role from Tom Arnold. We also have a boy band legend in there, uh, uh, Trevor Pennick from the um, group O-Town is pretty much making his uh, screen, big screen debut with that. And he is uh, tremendous in the film. I'm impressed that Michael is still going after decades, decades of projects. Uh, How did you get to work with him how did that come to be oh it was so so amazing and you're right he's been doing it for so long and not only doing it so long doing it good for so long he's an amazing talent i think he's an icon i think he's been in some of the most iconic movies at least for me and some really iconic scenes um and getting him for this project i know now he's uh in the later stages of his career he'll, he'll mix in some independent films uh in between like his tarantino projects and so we said, this is cool. We were really excited. We thought we had a really good script. And we said, let's 
would make a little wish list of who he wanted to play the role of wit which he plays and uh he was definitely on it. And we're like, I don't know if we'll get Michael, but it's cause rip so we call his rip, you know, what can you do but ask? So we ask, they ask to see the script, you send the script, they like the script, then they say, This is when he's available. Can you make this happen? And this is, you know, how long you can have him, and this is how much it costs, and he's willing to do it. And uh, you know, he he looked at your guys' stuff. Uh he likes uh he likes your last movie. We did we had a previous movie with Tobin Bell called Rebroken. So that always helps that we we worked with some other uh uh, good sized names in the business, and um, he was generous enough to uh, come be a part of our movie. And yeah, I was just like you when we got the call, and they said, uh, "Yeah, Michael's Michael will do it if you can do these days." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, let's do. You know, you try and act very uh, uh, calm and 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 um, like you're uh, a peer, and be like, "Yes, that's great. All right, we'll, we'll love to have Michael." But then you hang it up, and I'm high five, and the other <laughs> I'm high five, and the other producers and the, and the writer. We go, holy shit, we got Michael Madsen in our movie. We're so excited. So that's really how it came about. That simple. It was just like, let's take a shot. The worst can happen is no. And you move on down the list and uh, your wish list. And uh, he, he he said yes. And we, we couldn't be happier. And uh, it turned out great. His performance is fantastic. He never loses that strength. It comes through no. and through. Even in yours. I would say I'm... and. This is is all honestly not kissing any butt or anything. Uh, with Final Wager, I felt it was one of his better performances I, most recently than than some of his most or you know recent or to current you know in the last couple of years. But go ahead. I agree with you. I do uh, some of his um, of his recent stuff. I said. This is bad. You know, I saw him in a couple. I watched a couple of the, the, the indies that he had done recently. I'm like, man, I just don't feel like that was Michael. That was right for Michael Madsen, even though he kills everything. But he, he's the cliche, man. He, he's so interesting to watch. You give him the phone book and he reads the phone book and it's interesting. And I, I believe he's that type of actor. And he, he came and we said, this is perfect for him if he does it. It's, and um, without, he's also the twist in the movie. So sometimes I get vague about uh, uh, exactly what he does in it because he's our kind of payoff big twist at the end. He has some, his, character's got everything to do with that but he again he he was so i agree with you i think he's wonderful in the movie i think he gets to really be you really just be the madsen you come to expect uh and uh we couldn't be happier he's got that subtlety about him i feel like when i watch him especially in final wager it's almost as though he reminds me of myself like an Aries. We we can sit there, <laughs> we can be subtle, but yet be prepared. We can come across that table. And that's what I felt and I was excited and hope for with Michael in your film is he was going to do that jumping, doing that rock, jump right, right. over the table and do something. I hope you guys down a road or sometime in the future where – Michael would get a role like this with you again, and we will get some sort of surprise that will allow for him to just get out of control. Oh, man, sign me up, because, yes, I'm with you. I, I love when he's, you know, uh, Reservoir Dogs, where he gets a little out of control is one of my top, like, three favorite movies of all time. Um, and I... I really like what you're saying because you you're a hundred percent right, and I gotta see I gotta see your acting role because if your effort looks like him, man, you should be you should be a list actor, nothing, you know. But he's he's you're right though; it's effortless. But there's something in his eyes always that, that the way you said it was perfect. You at any time it feels like even if he's talking about and it seems to like this person, but he's got that thing in the back of his eyes that at any time he could jump over that table and strangle the life out of you. And that, that's such an amazing quality to have. And the effortless is true. It's just, it's just natural. He's never like, I never, you never see him and think, Oh, he's acting there. He's, it's, he's, it's effortless is the perfect word. And I love the, uh, the thing of in his eyes somewhere, he could just jump over the table at any time. And I think you nailed it. I'm yeah. stealing that, by the way. <laughs> no, seriously, because he's not intrusive, yet I feel in most of his films and most of his projects, he's not pushed enough that I would like to, and I don't mean out of control, Scott, where he's 
uh, erratic and and showing instability. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't believe he's so refined. It's just taking that refinement. And it, it, it reminds me of Kevin Costner to where Kevin Costner has that refinement as well. He can be subtle and grounded, yet he can leap millions of bounds, mm-hmm. yet still stand solid in one place. I want that to happen for Michael. I, I I agree. I love it. I love what you're saying. And I also love Kevin Costner too, man. Me and you are on the same wavelength here. I, I think Costner's fantastic. And, uh, you know, they, that I've never, I don't think I've heard anybody compare those two before. I can't, it's a good comparison. Uh, it is, it is because they could, you're right. They could be unhinged without being like totally crazy. Like you were saying, like, or unhinged in that way. It's uh yeah, it's, um, again, it was, uh, I just wanted to soak it in the days that we had him there, learn as much as I could. And uh, stay out of his way, but he was a sweetheart and um, so fun to talk to and so willing to talk to, to you to, or to me the time uh, about acting, about movies, about the set. He gave me advice a couple of times. I was just like, this is this is a bucket list uh, experience for me. Um, so this is uh, great. And yeah, I, I hope to work with him many more times down the road because uh, it was just a top notch experience because even though he plays all these heavies and gangsters and he's, uh, I don't want to ruin it for him, but he's such a sweet man when you meet him in person and he's so down to earth. And so like, you know, he wouldn't run off and have lunch by himself and would lock himself in his room or his trailer. He would stay out and uh, hang with the guys, man, and chop it up and talk and, uh, and have it have his food and just uh just wanted to be one of the guys man the guy's been in just the biggest of the big movies so it was really refreshing and um really cool and he was great with the crew as well and we're all just people grinding trying to trying to level up in these businesses and he's done it all and he treated us all uh, with uh, the utmost respect so he's a plus in my book uh for sure i gotta ask and to those that may or may not know uh tom arnold he's from one mm-hmm. of one of the best shows of the era of Roseanne. I still Mm -hmm. appreciate that series, that sitcom with Roseanne Barr. I have to ask how Tom Arnold, why Tom Arnold, he's 65 years old. I know he's still going, but how and why it, it really, it didn't perplex me, Scott. It just surprised me. Because when I look at him, I just remember his comedy days. And still to this day, Mm -hmm. it, um, it's not effortless to observe or watch him seriously. Right. Right. It's he, um, yeah. Why Tom Arnold kind of, we lucked into him and was so, uh, grateful to get him. He was the part that he played. He played uh, for people out there. Is, is my mother is getting kicked out of a nursing home, and he's the nursing home director. And it's a you know the storyline series, but there's a lot of comedy to it. And we felt like we we needed some. His part was supposed to be more just the serious guy saying, "Hey, your mom's out of here." And then we had these thoughts of, "Well, maybe get somebody funny for this." And um, who could we get? And we were going to start auditioning actors and. Um, and to be honest, M- Michael H- Madsen had uh, one of his reps um, that also uh, um, represented Tom Arnold. And we just happened to throw it out there. We said, do you, what do you think? Do you have anybody on your roster? We didn't know. We just kind of threw it out there and said, uh, we're looking to add some comedy to this part. We know it's not the biggest part in the world, but it would be great a great cameo to come in and hit this scene hard and be good for our movie. And, and they said, well, um, I can run it by Tom Arnold. He said, Tom Arnold? From, like you said, from Roseanne? From True Lies? From the Grace Dance Sports Show? That Tom Arnold? And they said, yeah. And I said, yes, please run it by him and see if he would be willing to do it. We'll send you the script. It's a good, it's a well-written script. Da, 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 da. And he did it. And he, and, yeah, and another guy that was uh, super nice, super professional. And the fun thing about Tom was that, yeah, he's, he's, funny without trying to be like this uh, Jim Carrey, like over the top funny. He just got a funny way about him. So he was perfect for this. And uh, 
And, you know, he went off the cuff a lot in it, and it, he made it even more funny than we had it written. The only thing we wish is we were like, because it was last, very last minute that Tom came on board, and we said, man, if we would have known sooner, we would have given way more to do. We would at least had like uh, added in a couple phone calls and just had him making phone calls and go, found a way to get those in the movie because uh, uh, we we felt like man, we missed an opportunity to have him more, but we were so um, so happy to have him in it. But we're, we were all big fans of his as well. And uh, my my thing I always remember from his True Lies with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jimmy Lee Curtis, one of the biggest movies at the time. It was just a monster, monster movie and a big hit. And everyone was like, why is Tom Arnold in an action movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger? And <laughs> it worked out perfect, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you and know, another thing perfect. that's that's surprising is he uh guest starred on The Bold and the Beautiful. And I'm like, what? Yes. Did you know that? Uh, I I knew it because somebody I did the bold and the beautiful like about a year ago. I think I did two episodes of Bold and the Beautiful, and I got someone tagged me in the post, or, or, or and or maybe he tagged Bold and the Beautiful, and it came up, and I um, I saw it on Instagram. And I said I thought he was making a joke at first, and then I go, holy shit! Uh, oh, excuse my language. Uh, holy moly! He uh, <laughs> he is uh, on. Well, beautiful. Yeah. So I, I haven't seen them if the episodes have played yet, but yeah, that was crazy. And I, at first I thought um, it was some kind of joke or someone messing around. Maybe I didn't know too. I'm like, are they messing with me? Cause I was on the board and the beautiful. And now they know that me and Tom just, I've been promoting this movie like crazy. And, but no, he was on it. And uh, I looked at his personal Instagram. He was posting about it and uh, it's pretty cool. It's where it was um, uh, weird to see him pop up and do a soap, but good for him, man. I'm sure he killed it, whatever it was. And I also, speaking of the best damn sports show, I saw him post that they're doing like a reunion show. And I think they're doing it at, this might be wrong, but they might be doing it out near neck of the woods, like out in Madison Square Garden. And they got like John Sally back and himself and some of the original guys, Michael Irvin and the original guys on the cast. They were like the original, for people that don't know, he was like the original throw five guys on a couch and talk sports. Now everyone's doing it. They were like one of the original shows that did it. It was a huge uh, thing. And they had actors and comedians and um, and athletes and talking about the news of the day sports-wise. And it's called The Best Damn Sports Show. And um, they're doing like a reunion show with all the – they're getting the gang back together. So that ought to be fun to watch too. Wow. There's – you know – we all know him best from the original Twister. I was not a fan of Twisters, the new one. It uh, these remakes or subtle, subtle films that are coming out, wanting to be in an extension of an original. They need to stop with that nonsense. Uh, where I'm going with this is when I see you and look at you and for the amount of time we've known each other, Scott, and for those that are tuning in, or if you're just tuning in on power 98.5 satellite radio or <coughs> biz talk radio, I've got actor producer, writer, Scott Ham with us today. Uh, we're talking about not only his projects and having had worked with Michael Madsen, uh, but also on the recent film final wager. I enjoyed it. I loved it. I got to watch it. Thank you you know, in my own private space. Um, I, if Bill or Jane, not, not um, James, if Bill Paxton was still alive, I would have recommended highly that you would need to figure out how to work with him. But knowing that his son, James um, is mm. in the industry, would you ever consider working with his son? Of course. Uh, who? Yes. Um, I am not familiar with his work yet, but if that opportunity, that would be an exciting opportunity to present myself. And also, um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm just a huge fan of movies and actors and, and TV. And so Bill Pass and I love, I loved RIP, man. That was heartbreaking. Uh, everything he did. I loved Sid, the, the drama, the comedy that he, he was another one of those actors that was just an original. And uh, to get a chance to, to work with him would have been amazing. Unfortunately I didn't, but then to get to work with his son would be amazing too. I've worked with a famous person who's passed away son. I worked with Jason Ritter uh, way back in the day after his, his dad, the famous John Ritter from through his company among a million other things. Uh, and he's just the same kind of thing. He was so talented, chip off the old block. And I was so honored to get to, to work with him because they're, 
you know, his dad's staple in this industry. And then now he's made a nice name for himself and hopefully the same thing for, for a uh, Paxton that will work that way. So yeah, that would be something I would be absolutely excited, excited to do. Yeah. He's done several projects. Uh, I believe the last one was in 2020, but don't hold me to it. He's got a great mm-hmm. look, but still, I always found his father um, to be interesting and where Bill Paxton will always remain a staple in my memory is from the film Weird Science with Kelly LeBrock. Oh, Chet? Oh, Chet. Yeah, yeah where he played yes. Chet. <laughs> you remember. <laughs> yeah, man. I do. I love it. I'm a, uh, like I said, I'm a fan of this business. I've seen a lot of stuff, and uh, Weird Science is great. But, uh, Michael Hall and Paxton, and yeah, Chet, and he was just obnoxious. The obnoxious older brother, and he, he, st- he steals that thing, man. He's great in it, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, um, any any uh, favorite shows or films that has come out recently, either on Peacock or Netflix, anything stand out at all to you recently that you're enjoying or could possibly be inspiring you for a new script or something? Man, I have been watching... I've been going down this, like, I've been watching lots of documentaries. I did, I saw, not streaming, but I did see the, the new Wolverine movie just the other day, the Wolverine, Wolverine movie, which is uh, Wolverine Deadpool movie, which is fantastic. But Netflix, I have been watching, too, because a good friend of mine that I did a movie with, Rob Mays, did a movie with Bo Bridges called Neon Highway. A uh, really good film. And then um, Trevor from our movie, Trevor Pennick, that I was talking about, is in that uh, Dirty Pop uh, about the boy bands, the Dirty Pop documentary. So I had to check that out. So I watched I, that I last it. night. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, his band O Towns, uh, I think uh, it's episode two that they're heavily in. They're, they're the first band that they took on after um, they, they had the falling out with NSYNC and, um, and uh, the Backstreet Boys. And then they took on O Town. And so he's had him too. So he's probably got some good stories for us. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I hope you did too. I really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, uh, and then I'm trying to catch up on, uh, and watch this, um, I want to watch this final season of Cobra Kai too, because, uh, to support the, to support the team there. So yeah, no, the, it's those kind of things. I, I've been watching, I've been overwhelmed with friends and people I've worked with doing really cool stuff. So I try and watch everything they do and support it and, and, uh, get behind it. So that's kind of what I've been watching lately. I haven't watched um and you just kind of hit on it i haven't watched it yet because i'm scared of it is the new uh beverly hills cop because i'm scared i'm not gonna like it and i love the first two so much they're like uh eddie murphy's like one of my heroes and i i I haven't heard anything bad about it so i hope it's good but um i do need to see it but that's uh like next on my list to to watch that um so that's kind of what i've been been watching and i'm the Olympics just ended and I was watching the Olympics uh, pretty hardcore as well. So that kind of took away from my streaming viewing, but um, those were really, those are really the things that I've watched uh, recently. Yeah. I, I couldn't come to watching it. I was thinking about it yesterday. I was catching up on some shows. Uh, Emily in Paris do not like this season. Uh, another one I thought, wow, what did they do? The umbrella uh, corporation or that show was another bust. Uh, you know, I was like so excited with some of the new mm-hmm. series, uh, whether it be season or not series, uh, season three or season four or something. And um, yeah, those two did not do anything for me. I did watch that pop film. I thought it wasn't too, too bad. They could have mm-hmm. narrowed it down to maybe two episodes or something. Uh, but I thought the same thing would be in a standalone, yeah. like two, two hour film rather than to put it in the episodes. I agree. I yeah, it was a little bit, uh, a little bit too drawn out. But one, the one and only show that stood out to me the most, and I honestly think it's better than, uh, um, what is it that uh, I have it here? Uh, Owning Manhattan with Ryan uh, uh, Sirhunt okay. from uh, uh, what is it? Th- those Bravo shows where they're like selling. Selling right. Chelsea or, or, or whatever, or million dollar listings. That's it. That's that it. show, uh, owning Manhattan is really good. I normally, if I don't like something or I find something predictable, I will fast forward through it or I will skip episodes or whatever it may be. I, when I submerge or just go deep 
within sitting into a series or a show or a film. And mm-hmm. that remote is not in my hand because I got <laughs> so darn bored so quick. Yeah, yeah. That is a very, very good sign. Because honestly, I, I get bored very easily with some of these, these projects that are just so quickly released and, and pushed through production with no mm-hmm. marketing, no advertising, nothing nothing of, of refinement put into it in care. And I'm, I, that's, that's why I haven't touched Beverly Hills Cop because I'm strongly concerned it's, it may be a fast push of a project. And, and if it wasn't for my respect for Jake Hall, I would have completely dissed uh, yeah. even the new Roadhouse because I'm just not a fan of just these, these chronicles. Yeah, these ones that are yeah, I, I am I'm a fan of his too, and I'm a fan of MMA and, and Conor McGregor, and um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm not I watched I watched Roadhouse right when it came out, and I was I was maybe my expectations were too high, but uh, yeah, I didn't love it like I thought I would love it. Um, I, I still you know it, it didn't it didn't try and copy the uh, the original, it didn't try and reboot it, it kind of did its own thing for the most part, but. Uh, just didn't capture that charm that the first one that the, the original had. So I'm with you on that. Um, yeah, I'll have to check out the only Manhattan thing. That's funny you say that because that, they've been, Netflix has been recommending that to me that I log in on my Netflix. It says, we recommend you. We think you'll like owning Manhattan. I'm like, do you? I don't, do I watch real estate shows? And I'm thinking about it. I'm like, well, maybe I'll have to check it out. Maybe they know something I don't know about myself that maybe I will like this. Now you said it too. I'm going to have to at least watch this. I have to see if it draws me in. Yeah, I want to read this because uh, I want to have Ryan Serhant uh, on my show. And this is what I found interesting, and it may be something you may want to do for a future projects, Scott. This is what Ryan wrote. I'm going to do a new real estate show that will be unlike anything anyone has seen before. It's pretty scary since we just started Ser- uh, Serhant. In your mm. country, do you watch Netflix, Amazon, or Peacock? The response back from the 12 people that he reached out to, the 12 clients that are in all in other countries wrote, he wrote, every one of them said Netflix and my choice was made. Two years later, the world got owning Manhattan. So it's quite interesting how Ryan reached out to 12 of his top clients that don't live in the U S wanting to know what networks between uh, Netflix, Amazon or Peacock do they watch? And they all pick Netflix. And it's really interesting because I'm aware that Peacock pays a lot better on a lot of their projects. Mm -hmm. Um, They put a lot more in marketing and advertising than Netflix and Amazon has been doing, but yet it is so very important as to where, your project, your film, your your series, your docu series is going to because if right. people are expected or they're relied upon to having to pay a membership in order to mm-hmm. see your project, mm-hmm. that can be a little bit um, disheartening because you're limited to a specific and only audience base and mass reach. And not everybody has all three. And some people, if not a lot of people now in this day and age, are getting rid of uh, these these extra expenses, especially the way Netflix has changed so much to where, you know, unless you're paying an extra seven ninety nine for someone who doesn't live in your household to have to be part of the Netflix family account, in addition to the fourteen ninety nine or whatever it is now, if they yeah. haven't raised it. Um, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it, it's this weird thing. And just from seeing, you know, now that I've taken my my uh, stab at this independent filmmaking world and, and, do, and dealing with and seeing numbers and stuff like that, it does seem like though these these membership services like Amazon Prime, like a like um, a Netflix, and then uh, Tubi is coming on really big too. Um, they kind of rule the roost, uh, especially for just flat out for just viewership. And I think a lot of people are willing to be like, I'm just going to pay a monthly 
thing and just watch these movies for free and not deal with it. But I think it's really, really tough is when you're on there and you're like an Amazon or one of the, or an Apple or something and you're charging to rent the movie or to buy the movie. I don't think, uh, at least the numbers that I see on uh, my movies and other, th- other mo- uh, similar movies, it's really hard to get people to clunk down the five ninety nine to rent it or the twenty four ninety nine to buy it or the you know even big movies people are like oh, I'll wait till it's free, so these streaming services where you're just paying the monthly fee but you get all that content anything that they have for free, that's where you can get this huge amount of eyeballs and you're right uh, Netflix and their, I mean I love you Netflix and they're uh, you're the best but they they I don't they don't pay a lot for uh, as much to get their content as uh, maybe some of the others do that load up with their content, but they, they just get the streams and they get the attention for your movie, like nobody's business. And, uh, but they all uh, take a lot of the money and invest it in uh, a lot of original content, a lot of Netflix content, you know, give, give a boatload of money to Adam Sandler and um, have them making five movies and, and Kevin Hart and stuff like that. So they obviously know what they're doing, um, but yeah, they're, uh, they're much harder for uh, independent film and stuff like that because um, they just want the, to, to, to throw you up there, but they definitely get to the eyeballs. That's for sure. I don't know if you would know this or not, but I don't, I don't recall reading or hearing another film on Netflix blowing bird box out of the water. I mean, hands down, I think that that's been a best film that's ever been shown on Netflix. And most likely if not being the most popular, what are your thoughts? Wow, I don't know for sure, but you know what? Now you're going to make me look it up when I get out of here and try and figure it out. I like Bird Box a lot. Um, that's been their biggest original film, huh? I, that, that's, that is crazy. Uh, I don't know. I, gotta, I, got, I can't lie. I, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. I, I never thought of who was their biggest earner. I know, um, you know this is just from box office and being on on what was it on max and prime and stuff is that Dune just like killed everybody and everything but they haven't even uh, the, the new dune part one and part two on uh, netflix maybe it was for box i'm trying to think i know adam sandler you know has had those murder mystery things on there and those got a tremendous amount of of uh of um views so uh we got it right maybe, here maybe they didn't need bird box bird oh, box bird you. box remains number four number one is red notice number two is don't look uh, up and number three is the adam project yeah well look at ryan reynolds he's got a movie in number one and number three they'll figure red notice that makes a lot of sense i mean that's the star power and that's ridiculous and as a Netflix original, you got, the, yeah, you got The Rock, you got Gal Gadot, and you got Ryan Reynolds. How could you lose? Well, I'm going to honestly it? say I'm kicking that one out because I thought that film was horrible, to be honest. Yeah. I think Bird Box <laughs> definitely blows that out of the water. I think it's yeah, only yeah. because of the people that were in there. If you didn't have Ryan yeah. uh, Gull and, uh, and The Rock, it, it would never. It would never. It's just a pretty straightforward uh, Heisty kind of film, fun movie. But the, you know what? The masses love it. I'm with you. I'd rather watch Bird Box, but uh, the uh, the masses they they love it, man. They they love just sitting back and watching the Fast and the Furious or John Wick or cool things like that and just being entertained. Um, okay, so that makes sense. That's number one. Yeah, I, I forgot. I, wow, none of the Sandler ones are in that top four. I, I would have thought he would at least have one of them in there because I know people love his movies. But uh, well, there you go. There you go. Going Good, back um, to your popular film, Finer Wager, yeah. what I would like to know is uh, it was stated that it's about a profound journey of redemption and self-discovery. self-discovery. Why and how? Where? What is it about the part of redemption and self-discovery? What makes it most iconic in that way? For, to me, it, because it's such this perplexed thing about like, uh, addiction and uh, addiction uh, on something like gambling. Gambling is kind of one of those things, especially nowadays, too, that, yes, is it an addiction? Yes, can it ruin lives as a compulsive gambler? Um, but it's it's legal now, and people can just go on their phones, and people are playing fantasy football, and, like, not every, you know, not everybody that's doing uh, uh, gambling has a, is a terrible person or, you know, you don't have to go into a back alley and call a bookie anymore or someone's breaking your knees if you don't pay because everything's so you think. Uh, it, it, it's different. So it's just, just this weird thing because gambling has such a stigma to it. 
because uh, yeah, uh, for people listening out there, it's it's about a, the movie's about um, um, a compulsive gambler that's in rehab or uh, the gambler's announcement meetings, and his mom gets in a tremendous amount of trouble, and he needs to find a way to fi- get sixty thousand dollars in a day on Christmas of all days when the world is shut down to get to save her from getting evicted from her nursing home. And then he finds out he has this power that he never ever. Is it a power or is it, you know, is he lying to himself? Is it a coincidence or whatever? He finds out he can't lose a bet on Christmas. He never has. In all the past years of his addiction, he's never lost a bet on Christmas. So the redemption part is just kind of like, it, it's, what do you do in that spot? Do you lie to your girlfriend and your loved ones and the people that you promised that probably have helped you out in the past and helped you out of jams and loaned you money and you said, I will never gamble again. And I'm going to put myself in gamblers around this. But you're doing it for all the right reasons because you know you can't lose and you need to make this money to save your mom. But it, does this make you a terrible person? Or does it, they, they lied or you are lying while you're gambling and gambling behind everyone's back to make this money for your mom? Or does this make you a great person for trying to help your mom out? So I think all those things and, and then what ends up being you know, not giving away how it turns out for him, he, he is trying to redeem himself as, as uh, I'm still a good person even though I, I've fallen off the old wagon here. And I'm still uh, you know, trying to be a good son and trying to be a good, a good a boyfriend and um, – even though along the way, you know, he's, he's lying to all these people that he, he loves and he's, he's never really came through for these people before. And now he's the one thing that should be the easiest to, to follow through with in your life, you know, keeping your word to someone. Now you're not keeping your word either. And um, so you, you, I hope that people, you know, are rooting for him to, to, to be able to save the day and redeem himself with his family and his loved ones. But you got to watch the movie and see. And I, I, I do think that's where the journey gets, um, Fun and also sometimes it puts people. I'll say this: like some of the reviews we've gotten, mainly good reviews, a lot of reviews. And, but then some people are uh, think, you know, are we by rooting for this guy? Are we rewarding gambling addiction? Are we rewarding this? And I think sometimes the, the critics or the the people who are doing it are looking into it a little too deep. There, it's more of like a a, a liar, liar that film type situation where it's like you, you have one day where where you have to deal with this. Thing in your life and how are you going to play it how's it going to turn out for you and your family in this one day if you if you play it just right even though you may be letting people down in that 24 hours so um yeah i i found it when i read the script i found it really really interesting i really loved it and that got all those things um were true a lot has changed if not advanced throughout the year since 2021 when you worked with Tobin Bell in the psychological thriller Rebroken. What's your mm-hmm. life been like since? What has that experience done for you? Uh, what would you like to do again uh, when we think about, you know, you getting, getting back involved in doing another psychological thriller? Yeah, it's changed for me since doing we broke in and then now having final wager and um, we, we just wrapped another one in January. That's editing is when I first got together with some people and said, let's try and make our own movies. Let's, I had been doing, I had booked some independent films just strictly as an actor and was walking around the sets and, and talking to some of the people and going, wow, you guys are doing this on your own. You're and they're like, yeah, things have changed, man. Things are different. You can make it, you can make these films for, you know, you don't need to have a trillion dollars or, or, you know, Fox or Sony behind you. You can do it and you can still get them out there if you make them good enough. And, and really, and then I thought, could I do that? Can I do that? I don't know if I could. And um, I think from them, from We Broken, the first one we did was called The Stay. And that was one that was a really small, low budget one that I basically did everything on because you know, when you first say, I think I want to make my own content, everyone just says, well, do it. Go write your own thing. Go write your own thing. And you're like, okay, so I just did it and uh, got, and, and it's actually done really good numbers with really like a no budget movie. It's done really good numbers on the streaming services. And then it also gave us a little credit to, to be able to do a bigger movie and we broke in and then get a name talent like Tobin Bell to be a part of it. And then since then, I, I think, uh, like you said, what's changed for me is like, uh, I know I can do this. I know I can get a movie made. I know I can get named talent to be a part of it. I know that I can, you know, obviously I can 
play parts in these that parts that I just like and want to play for myself that I see and go, you know what? I would love to play this part in here if everyone's cool there or there or some, you know, um, one of them was written where they said, Scott, we want you to play this part. And I'm like, this, I can, so I can do this stuff now. I didn't think before I thought I have to be a quadrillionaire and I have to have a studio behind me and I have to be able to get, you know, top to bottom A-list talent. Maybe, but you don't, you can do these things on your own. And um, I didn't even know if I could, because I'm not the biggest tech guy in the world either. But I'm learning, and um, I, yeah, I've learned that. Shoot, I can get things done in this business if I put my mind to it, and that's where we are. So I'm excited. We were trying to make my little team that I've assembled. We're trying to make one film a year was the goal when we started. One film that we love, a script that we love, and get behind and try and make it happen. And we're on pace to do that. And I'm excited to see what 2025, what comes about in 2025, and what the next one's going to be. Because I, I want to keep doing it. And and again, part of that too is like. I don't know how to get these movies like distribution, but now I do, or, or at least get them considered for distribution. And so far, so good. We, we're, we're batting a thousand on finding a, a good distributors to, to put our stuff out. And we just want to keep growing and getting better. And hopefully I'm talking to you in another year or two going, I didn't think I'd be here now, but look at what we're doing now. So <laughs> uh, it's great. It's great. I, I Again, I, to answer, I know I answered that in the long form, but it's just really that since that movie uh, and doing the others, I'm just, Sometimes I look back and go, hey, you can do it, man. I didn't think I, I would be able to. Uh, you, you know, I thought, you're just an actor. You just audition and you book parts. Sometimes you book a part. Sometimes you don't get the role. Sometimes you do. And that's kind of your grind. Uh, that, all that stuff's above your pay grade to 